Let's start in Helena. The unbeaten Huskies hosting Briarwood. Two unbeaten in 6A Region 3. Helena's Jordan Washington takes it in for the Huskies. Touchdown. We're tied at 21 in the third quarter. And then Helena in the red zone again. Dominic Santiago this time. Huskies go up 28-21 early in the fourth. Briarwood unable to get it in the end zone. So Garrett Heinlein kicks the field goal to make it 28-24 with 9.23 to go. Now Helena just trying to run the clock out, but Santiago loses the football and the Lions recover, so they got a chance. 129 to go, last chance to win the game, but Joshua Thompson will throw the pick. Nathan Thomason will seal the game. Huskies win 28-24. The Huskies are 7-0. In 7A Region 3, Thompson in bounce back mode after that loss to Clay Chalkville. Hewitt Trustville looking for its sixth win in a row. Trustville baseball player Grayson Pope honored before the game. Seriously injured when a tree fell in his golf cart during a storm in June. Warriors come out firing early. A.J. Green from a yard out. Thompson up 7-zip. Later in first, Trent Seaborn with a short pass to Colvin Landru who will turn on the Jets and take it to the red zone, a 45-yard gain. And that would help set up this run by Michael Dijon, who gets help from the big guys up front to push him across the goal for a 14-0 lead. Thompson led 24-7 at the half, second half. Huskies in the red zone. Peyton Floyd hits Jackson Melton, who tight ropes his way in. But Thompson had an answer every time. Seaborn to Colby Hearn. And watch that move to avoid a tackler. And then Hearn goes in for the score. And then a little later, Seaborn is going to find Horn again. Thompson has the Huskies number again, winning 40 to 14 the final. We had a great week of practice. And you know, people doubt us and they and rightly so. Um, we got to get better. We got to get better from tonight. That's a good football team, and I thought we played good. We came out with the energy and um, you know, I I don't know where we're at, but we're, we're better this week than we was last week, and we need to be better the next week than this week. So we're blessed, and I'm happy. I thank God for the victory. We knew we had to practice um, as great as we could. You know, coming off that loss, it was hard for all of us. And I think going into this week, we had to stay focused. And Coach Freeman uh, emphasized we have to have attention to detail, know, know where we're supposed to be at all times, how to execute all the plays. And I think throughout this week, we just had great practices every day, and uh, it really showed tonight. Also in 7A Region 3, Tuscaloosa County and Spain Park have both had long playoff droughts. County High's last postseason trip, 2014, Spain Park 2017. Here on the opening kickoff tonight in Northport, Reggie Jackson will open up the game with a 95-yard kickoff return down the sideline. And boy, that'll take the air out of the home crowd in a hurry. That gave the Jags a 7 Nothing lead, and then early in the second, Brock Bradley finds Jonathan Bibbs in the end zone for a 26-yard touchdown. Now, Wildcats on the next drive, Braden Smith. That's the play, actually, that we just saw. We're going to see the pass intercepted there by Jamari Mosley. And then the Jags back on offense. Bradley will punch it in to give the Jags a 21-3 lead. Wildcats will tack on another field goal before the end of the half. And then they get in the end zone again. This time, Gage Harrett will punch his way in. And Spain Park with a big win on the road tonight, 35-14. First region win of the year. Two teams in need of a win. Hoover, a three-game losing streak. Oak Mountain on a five-game skid. First drive for the Bucks. Kamal Emerson bulldozes his way into the end zone. And it's 7-0 Buccaneers. Next possession, Noah Schubach will scramble. He'll find Jordan Woolen in the back of the end zone. And Hoover's up 14 to nothing. Third possession for the Bucks. It's going to be shoe back to Jonah Winston, who outraces the Oak Mountain Eagles defense for the long touchdown. 21 nothing. Hoover. Second quarter now. Bucks running back Chalmers Peters will show off some shifty running moves. He'll find his way into the end zone. Going down the left sideline. And that makes it 28 to nothing. Hoover, then on the next possession, the Bucks pouring it on. Andy Howard to Woolen for six more. 34-0 Hoover at the half, and the Bucks win at 62-14. Let's go to 6A Region 4, third-ranked Hillcrest at Central Tuscaloosa. Hillcrest on the first drive of the game. Caden Smith will take the Wildcat snap. He'll make a few Falcons defenders miss. 
and he'll go 50 yards. And Hillcrest goes up 7-0. Now fourth and goal for the Patriots. And how about the hit by Central's Jarrell Hodges? Stopping the Patriots. Santonius Brown right there. But Hillcrest threatening to score again. This time his quarterback Bryson Kimbrough. And Kimbrough will pick the toss to his running back. And he'll follow his blockers into the end zone, stretching for the touchdown, 14-0 Patriots. Then right before the half, Central with the ball on fourth and goal. David McNeil hits Jalen Powell, but it's too much Hillcrest tonight, 49-14 the final. Pleasant Grove, a week after an emotional win over Parker, back in 5A Region 5 play against John Carroll. 5-0 for the first time, the Cavs were, in three decades. The Spartans ranked fourth in 5A. Early on, well, the Cavs came out to play. Mitchell Nutter shot out of a cannon, and he'll go breaking tackles down the right sideline. This is a John Carroll offense. Came in averaging 42 points a game, and they led 3-0 at that point. But it was only a matter of time until the Spartan offense got cooking. Eric Hanley to Clarence Taylor to give Pleasant Grove the 7-3 lead. And then a little RPO action. Hanley will find an open Taylor yet again over the middle, and he'll go 57 yards to the house. 13 to three Spartans. Sparty driving again towards the end of the half, trying to put another touchdown on the board, but Jordan Smith is stripped. Corin Wright falls on the loose ball, and Pleasant Grove led 13-3 at the break. But in the second half, here's how you atone for that fumble. Jordan Smith breaks into the second level, outruns the secondary, and Pleasant Grove wins 37 to 12. You know, we, we know who we're playing when we have games, but our biggest focus is making sure that we're playing Pleasant Grove football. You know, at the end of the day, if we go out and play Pleasant Grove brand of football and the results is what the results are, then we can live with it. But when we don't play our brand of football, that's when we have an issue. Uh, we call him the Slim Reaper. Uh, man, he's an awesome football player, even better kid. Um, we just found a way to kind of get him isolated and, and find some things that they was doing um, in, in coverage-wise on some motion stuff and, and got a chance to get him open and he made a play. Clarence Taylor, a couple of touchdowns tonight. Coming up next on the Blitz, a look back at a Ramsey route. And the game of the week, Westbrook Christian taking on Piedmont in the return of Steve Smith to the Two, Field of Champions. Three, Highlights on the way. Four, and we'll start this block with 6A Region 3 as well. Pelham hosting Calera. And the Pelham Panthers with a huge play early in this one. Clayton Maines is back to the goal line. Will throw up an absolute bomb to Cortez Talbert. It's a beautiful throw. And Talbert's got the speed to get in the end zone. 7-3 Pelham. And then later Maines will hand off to Michael Grayson, who will take it to the left side for a 24-yard touchdown run. Panthers up 14-3. And then the Pelham Panther defense striking and Torius Johnson looking to answer for Clara. However, he throws a pick to Will Felton, who will take it back for the pick six. And the Pelham Panthers with a big win tonight over Calera, 35 to six. The Friday Night Rivals game of the week. Two teams trying to stay alive in the 3A Region 6 race. Westbrook Christian and Piedmont both one and two in region play. We, Westbrook coach we, Steve Smith coached at Piedmont the last 17 seasons, won five state titles. Now he's on the other sideline. Second quarter, Trevor Pike. He had a big game. Look at the tackles he runs through. And then into the end zone, Piedmont up 14 to nothing. But Smith has a great athlete in LaMichael Mitchell. He had four catches for 162 yards tonight. Look at this catch. And then watch him make about three or four guys miss. And then he just moves the pile down to the four yard line. He's been working in that new weight room at Westbrook. Mitchell would score three plays later to make it 14 to seven. But then on the ensuing kickoff, last play of the first half, Trevor Pike takes it to the 21, runs into a pile of Westbrook Christian Warriors, and then runs out of them. 79 yards for the touchdown. Piedmont up 21-7 at the half. That was a big play. Third quarter, Piedmont inside the 20, and it's Trevor Pike again. And he's just tough to bring down. This guy coming off an injury, but he looked good tonight. In the end zone again, and then Piedmont's defense getting it done. Cale Austin forces the fumble, scoops up the fumble, and scores off the fumble. Piedmont wins 35-19. 
And let's show you what happened last night when Ramsey took on Winona at Legion Field in a 5A Region 5 game. Early first quarter, the Dragons deep in Ramsey territory. Anthony Young with a quarterback draw. Weaves in and out of traffic. Winona's up 7-0 early. Still in the first, Ramsey's Cameron Keenan scrambles outside the pocket. Hits Ashton Ashford, who takes it in for the touchdown. Ramsey up 17-7. And then Keenan finds Christian Stenson in stride. It's 26-7, and the Rams were done. Keenan with a lateral to Jacob Andrews, who throws to Jaquiel Malone, who takes it in for the score. Ramsey's got some athletes. They win 65-14 over Winona to remain undefeated in regional play.